Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here. Next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Coming to you from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. We're doing it again. This time with Warlord Games, Bolt Action, and the Band of Brothers starter set. I'm super excited to bring some of this to life. We got the core paint set, their new rapid deployment paint system, and I've got the U.S. Army paint set. Interesting things to note. Once I started pulling these paints out, I noticed uh, Army Painter made them. So that's pretty interesting, and I have lots of experience with their system. So we built this guy out of the Band of Brothers set, the U.S. Airborne paratroopers. They're all green. I had to do some research and nerd out to figure out how I'm going to paint them. But first things first, I did prime them black, and what I'm doing is I'm doing a quick little spray of black with my airbrush, right? I just want to make sure everything's consistent. I used the pitch black from the core set. And we're doing a quick little top down highlight. We'll mix some white right in to the black. We're using all the colors in that core set. We're making a traditional little pre-shade. Seems like the thing to do with some of these more uh, historical style game systems. We're just building up some clean little highlights. Top down, nothing crazy. We're just going to add a little bit more white as we go. This is really basic. If you're new to painting and you're trying to get into bolt action, you can do this really easily with an airbrush out the box or worst case scenario, you can prime it black and then you can grab white primer, like rattle can primer, and just spray some white right across the top. It will work easy. And if you didn't want to do any of that, just prime it gray. Gray is almost universally going to be a better starting place. It's going to have better stick with a lot of these pigments. But, you know, being an airbrush guy, I like to do it this way. And you see what I'm doing with that machete? Throwing some little gleam effects on it. Now, I did build this guy with the machete. Had to. Now, we're going to use U.S. Army green. Load it up in the airbrush. Thin it down. And we're going to do a subtle little glaze over everything. Again, if you're new to painting, glazing is just painting with really, really, really thin paint. So that it shows through the values of the previous layer. In this case, it's just straight black and white. You can do that with colors, too. Kind of get some of the colors to interact with each other in interesting ways. All you got to know is that we're taking this green and we're applying it very thin over the black and the white pre-highlight. And so some of those values are going to poke through. Nothing crazy, nothing like the sci-fi stuff that I do, nothing like the Warhammer 40k things. Keeping it kind of simple and subtle on purpose. So let's go back to this guy. I chose no gun in the hand, machete raised to the air, mohawk guy, pistol strapped to the side. <laughs> I love the flexibility of these kits. You can really nerd out on them. Now, the big starter set did come with some Germans. It came with a tank, but I had to paint this guy. Had to build him up right now. So there it is. We laid that U.S. Army green all over everything. Like I said, I pulled up pictures to make sure I was doing it right. So we're grabbing basically this khaki and this brown. Okay. We're going to kind of mix them together a little bit as a base coat before we go all the way up to the brighter khaki. And we're going to paint all the pouches. We're gonna paint the backpacks, everything. Okay, two thin coats, maybe three. It's really important with these details that you go on kind of thin with your paintbrush using very light brush pressure. That's very important. Light brush pressure, don't push too hard. It'll scrape the paint around. You'll never, you know, you just try to get it to transfer. Biggest advice I give anyone. You want, you're transferring the paint to the model. You're not, you know, windshield wiper motioning it into the model and squishing it down. So we're just going to go through, get it all done, let it dry, especially if you're using an airbrush like I recommend. Uh, the airbrush is very thin and subtle, so you can scrape it up pretty easily, even though it doesn't really matter since we're repainting these sections, later it will matter. So he's got tons of little pouches. I know. I glued all these motherfuckers on them. <laughs> it's an incredibly detailed kit. I had no idea bolt action was like this. Totally blown away. Like I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a picture that I pulled up on Google of these guys, different people who re rebuilt the uniforms, trying to make sure I do my best, do justice to this Band of Brothers set, make sure everything's looking great and relevant, you know, like and accurate. So he's got some pouches that sneak around on his ammo belt. He's got some straps around his legs. I mean, I found all these stuff in pictures of these guys, right? It's crazy. I learned that the pouch built into his pants is not... A different color that is built into the pants. It looked like the strap was holding it there, but I was wrong. I mean, you can go so nerd level on these guys. Like, now I have to play the game. Shit. So, thin coats, backpack. The bigger, the broader the surface, the more gentle you want to be and more patient. Now, you can just try to slap it on out the pot. 
but I recommend, you know, keeping it thin for the sake of low texture. We're going to pull out this wood brown color. It's actually like a perfect color for their boots. They had these really rich brown, almost mahogany boots. These, the leather was so amazing on these uniforms. So we're making sure the boots have that color. This is from the set. We're going to make sure his uh, pistol holster has the same color right here. Boom. I mean, yo. You know, I, I mean, like, I, I was crazy, man. Like, I never sat there and looked at so many pictures of a, of, of a, a uniform in my life to make sure I was doing... I mean, I instantly was enjoying myself. So we are going to take some creative liberties with the machete. Make sure we uh, bring some heat to it. Now, I'm, tr I'm, I'm holding myself back, right? Now, let me show you a quick little technique. That's the slurry we used to paint up all that khaki. I'm going to take some of this brown, swirl it in there real quick, and while that stuff is drying, I'm just going to treat this as a base coat for the flesh tones. Now, they did give us a Caucasian skin tone, but it's really bright, so it's going to have trouble sticking to what I've already done with the airbrush and the overspray. So a real thin coat of this, you know, slightly darker and different, entirely different color, right? So there'll be maybe a little interplay between the flesh and this color, but at the very least, it's going to give us a solid base coat that the Caucasian skin tone will stick to much easier. Oftentimes, doing a quick little step like this will save you time. You won't have to battle uh, the pigment. Yeah, you won't uh, get any texture or any lines because that's what I'm trying to avoid. Now, the Army Painter system and this rapid deployment system from Warlord Paints, they're very simple. You lay down the block, you block in all the base colors, and you dip the model, right? They provide you with all the materials in this box set. Warlords was kind enough to send me a box full of their rapid deployments. I was able to pick up this Band of Brother box set. Big shout out to Nick Hobbies right there. And now we're really giving it, you know, the good, good old college try. Historicals. Here we come, man. So here's our second pass in all the khakis, doing our thug thizzle, making it look its best. We're going to just grab this random yellow that's in the core set, mix it in with some of that slurry, lay down some uh, mohawk work. He's going to be a dirty blonde. That easy. But I'm constantly holding myself back from trying to bring that comic book style, all the edge pops, everything. I'm just trying to force myself into the mindset of a little bit more gritty, a little bit more muted, realistic worlds. Second pass on the boots, and we're just trying to stay busy. We're working on one section while the other section is drying. You can envision having, you know, 23 of these guys lined out. You would be doing all their boots at once, switch to the ammo packs, everything. It would honestly not take you very long. Making sure it's nice and smooth, taking our time right there. And I'm I'm really impressed with these uh, rapid deployment paints. It's, you know, manufactured by Army Painter. I believe they're a different formula. We're getting those chest straps, and it, there's great stick here. I mean, like it's it's a, it doesn't have the same kind of medium that I'm used to seeing out of these Army Painter productions. So uh, it's they're they're very impressive. So here's that Caucasian right now. We're gonna thin it down. And we're just going to now lightly apply it to him. We kind of just repaint his whole face. It's very thin. It looks like it's not, but I mean, it's because it's such a high pigment paint. Low brush pressure or light brush pressure. Let it dry. It's coming together now. We're making things happen. I mean, that, I mean, that guy is cool as hell. Oh, real quick. Let's get the soles of his boots. They're black. I mean, I, I'm even thinking outside of uh, bull action. Like, I mean, obviously, I'm interested in this game now, but I'm like, man, I can make some Imperial Guards out of these guys. I can make some Cultists out of these guys. I mean, shit, they're so convertible. You can make a whole hundred Cultists out of these guys. Oh, real quick. Here's a little slightly more advanced technique for, for you guys out here. That is a black glaze. It's basically dirty paint water, and we're going to just basically create this uh, dark edge on the machete to help reinforce a slight yet in subtle non-metallic effect that's going back to the airbrush that we when we create those gleams and it's going to dry that way and it's going to stay that way i'm not going to use a metallic paint there second pass on the skin make sure it's not spotty none of that undertone is showing through no brush strokes we're just making it its absolute brightest because you always got to take it to 11 before you wash it back down to 10. that is the system Looking pretty cool. Let's grab some more of that khaki color. What is this? U.S. Gators Brown. I mean, is that even a, a word? <laughs> no offense, Warlord. Thank you for sending me that paint. Real quick, thin it down. Rapid deployment of paint coming 
you know, coming in clutch. God, puns, wordplay. We're just going to brighten them up. Like I said, take it to 11. We want them to be a, kind of their brightest self so that the wash has something to do. While we let that dry for the wash, let me promote Patreon for one second. If you guys like what I do here on YouTube or Twitch or you like the content you see on Facebook, help a brother out, man. Join up on Patreon today. Get that early VIP access. All right, we're back to business. Quick shade. Army Painter Strong Tone. This is actually the dip medium. You dip it in there and you fling it. This is a great product. I've used it for years. And if I was doing 50 of these guys, I'd use it. But we're going to be using the Quick Shade Wash Set instead. This is a little bit more easy to control. There's more colors, more opportunities to be an artist. So we're going to use the Flesh Wash. And these are acrylic based or at least water soluble. That's one of the other reasons I like them. We're going to use their Medium. This is their proprietary blend right here to help you thin it down a little bit. You can also use water or other flow aids. And we're going to swirl this up with a little water and we're going to thin it down. Okay? That's simple. Now, once we get it to the right consistency, we're feeling it's, it's thin enough to flow, but it's also got enough pigment left behind, then we're ready to go. A light brush pressure here. We're not trying to reactivate any of those thin layers of paint. We're barely, you, barely applying any pressure. Don't be afraid to do a, a more of a stabbing motion rather than a, you know, a, a swiping motion. Make sure you get maximum coverage here. Let the wash sit where it's gonna create that shadow in the recess. Try to wick it away from any of the raised smooth areas on the sides of his head. Give yourself a second here to do a little inspection to make sure it's looking good. Because if you leave any pools of this wash behind, it will not dry in the way you want it to look. So that's my biggest piece of advice to anybody who's just breaking into ball action. Pretty simple. Once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quick. We'll even throw it on the hair. Flesh wash looks good. We're going to just manipulate the shadows and his creases of his face and his eyes. Make sure it's looking real good. You've got some time to play with it. You can dry the brush off, even use it like a sponge. We're going to throw some in on his knuckles, get inside of his fingers, create that shadow, that dimension. Contrast is the name of the game here. But also that flush wash is perfectly formulated to give it a nice tint and make it look a little bit more natural. Really digging it. Been using this system for years. Army Painter does make the best washes in the game today. Hands looking good. Hey, look at them. Badass. All right, mid brown. This is another one of my favorite colors. I'm going to throw that right into the slurry. This is our flesh wash slurry with mid brown act added. So it's a little bit more brown, a little bit more dark. And we're going to use this, thin it down a little bit more, just like we did before. And we're going to use very light brush pressure and we're going to apply it to all the khaki. Uh, ammo pouches and the backpack all that stuff canteen god how many things <clears throat> and we're gonna use this to kind of shift it give it a little bit more weather a little bit more staining shadows in the recesses if you knew wash is trying to penetrate find its way into the recesses and, and dry there with a degree of opacity to help it look more uh, vibrant and give you a little bit of contrast. So this is Strong Tone. Their iconic blend that they make in that dipping medium. This is their quick shade equivalent. We're going to mix that into the slurry and we're going to keep going. Okay. It's a little bit darker. It's got some, you know, noticeable different delineations. Maybe there's a little black in there even. And we're going to use this for the boots. Bring that leather out up a notch. Basically just find its way inside the shoelaces, any of the folds of the fabric. It's going to settle in there. It's going to give us an overall tint on the big round areas, it's gonna just kind of shift it a little bit, but anywhere it settles, it will give you a nice sharp line. We'll give some here to the machete's handle, looking its best. Mm. All right, here we go, military shader. It's been a while since I used this one, but this is a perfect opportunity. So we're gonna take the military shader. We're not gonna use a raw dog out the pot. We're gonna mix it back into the slurry. Brown is the best color. Yo, check it. Got a whole video about it. So we're going to basically just add this green military shader to this brown until I feel like I've got a great dark brown green shadow. And once it looks good, I'll thin it down and we're going to go. Now, this is where the brush control is crucial, guys. Very light brush pressure. Be very careful. Have it nice and thin. Now, a lot of times I will have already varnished the model before I do this to protect it. So I know I'm not going to peel up any of the paint. But if you're a little too aggressive here, you have 
the possibility of tearing up that sweet, sweet airbrush green because it is very thin. Okay, and you could reactivate it, just tear it up. So, in the past, we will have like varnished it, and then you can go, you can go nuts. But I don't got time for that. So we're just laying it down. He's got plenty of great details in the fabrics. He's got tons of lines and stitching. So this is really going to bring that out, give it that gritty realism, help us shift it into the historical world. You know, obviously he's not done yet. This is the rapid deployment system. This is how you get it on the table, right? Meow. Okay. You can be playing bolt action this weekend with your boys. It's that simple. Now, obviously I will take this model to that next level live on Twitch. In the meantime, guys, play on players.